my name is Mike Abin and welcome to my KSP campaign. A portion of the previous episode was devoted to the Karayan 1 returning with its rescued crew from Minmus and starting the arrow breaking process so that it could reduce its velocity enough so it could rendezvous with Kerbin Station in low Kerbin orbit. And that process is nearing its completion. So this episode really is going to be about getting those folks back down to the surface installing the new crew for the Karayan and getting the Karayan ready for its next mission. But uh, I do have some other things that are coming up that I do have to sort of wrap my head around. Like one thing being that I do have a Drez transfer window coming up in about 40 days and I really want to get a major expedition ready for that. I am set now to send Purbles out on interplanetary adventures and although Drez is perhaps not the easiest of first targets for your Kerbals. Um, it's the one that's coming up, so I do want to get ready for that, but that's going to require, well not require, but I would like to install a couple of more uh, tech nodes, tier 8 tech nodes in fact, I'd like to unlock, and of course that's going to require some science, so here we are again with the Model K2 going around the little mini biomes, and I was rather surprised to find out that a number of these biomes I had yet to even visit with this surface science pack equipment. So there was actually quite a lot of science to be had, but one, well, small issue that I had is that with my mistake of sending Shalcal up to Kerbin Station uh, towards the conclusion of last episode instead of an, my engineer Wilman, uh, I ended up with no scientists on, my, on the surface. All my scientists are now in space. So, say hello to McNand. Yes, there's nowhere for science to hide because McNand is on the job. I don't know what the hell that just was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, McNand, uh, he's actually only my second Kerbal hire. All my other Kerbals, uh, obviously besides the original four that you get, were rescued. Betlana is my other only hire. But I had to hire another Kerbal, and specifically I needed a scientist, so here is McNand. And McNand, as you can see, is sporting this rather fine red racing stripe down the back of his head. I do not know what that's about. Actually, I do kind of know what that's about, because if you take a look at his eyebrows, yeah, there's something a little bit freaky about him. I don't think the textures are quite right. That's okay though, I actually kind of rather like them. Every team, I think, needs a minor sociopath around to keep everybody on their toes. <laughs> anyway, with the sun setting, uh, and with over an hour into this mission, I did get to every one of these little biomes in around the Kerbal Space Center, but it was well worth it because upon recovery, I ended up with 421 science, giving me a total of 606. So it's 550 for one of these tier 8 science nodes, and the one I decided to go with was Specialized Science Tech, mostly for the magnetometer. Yes, uh, more science equipment means more science to collect, and if I'm going to send a ship out into interplanetary space, it's not like I have the option to retrofit it later, so I'm going to send it out with every bit of science I can get. But in the meantime... Before we get to that, which will be obviously for a future episode, a Dres mission that is, we need to get to Kerbin Station because Bartner, he's got a gift that he's putting together for the crew of the Karayan 1. Now the Karayan will be here soon, and one of the things it's bringing along with it is Gilly's Mark II cockpit, which we have to get down to the surface to finish off that particular rescue contract. And so we got to first figure out how are we going to attach it to the station so it'll stay here. I do have a vessel coming up in this episode, which is going to bring it back down to the surface. But we need to attach it to the station, so Bartner's going to uh, grab one of these spare docking ports that we have here in storage. In addition, i got to get the Karine ready for its... Uh, next mission. Now part of that is going to be to completely refuel it. And right now uh, the fuel in the station, the station's pretty much empty as far as fuel goes. So we're going to have to send up a resupply barge. That will also be in this episode. But um, i got to give it some equipment too. Now we're going to upgrade the Karayan a little bit, make it a little more science appropriate. So we'll collect together some of the equipment that's going to be required for that. But in addition, i got to think about what its next mission is going to be. And I went on back and forth a bit on 
on this one. Um, and a few contracts motivated what I decided the mission will be. One contract was I have a tourist that wants to do an orbit around the moon. I figured, oh, that's easy enough to do. Number two is I have a contract to land on the moon. And number three, I have a contract to capture an A-class asteroid. Um, you might think, well, that last one doesn't seem too connected, but in orbit about the moon, I have the arm B still attached to its B-class asteroid. And so I figured, uh, why don't we just simply refuel that? But to refuel that, it's going to require uh, a docking port. So one of the jobs of the Karine is going to be to install a docking port. So uh, Bartner's getting another extra docking port ready to be installed on the Karine. And uh, then it's going, to, and then I have to send up another vehicle to refuel the, the uh, RMB. At the same time, while we're at that asteroid, we'll collect a little bit of science because there's science to be collected from the asteroid. And then, also in orbit around the moon, I have the Kegel, I'm losing track of my Kegel numbers, I believe it's the Kegel 2, one of my landers. Um, it is also devoid of fuel and devoid of a docking port, so uh, we're going to install a docking port on that, so that's another docking port. Thankfully, I do have all these spare docking ports. They're here for a reason. And uh, we'll attach that to the Kegel 2, <laughs> and then we'll go down to the moon and collect some more science from the surface of the moon because we do need science. Just the one thing I really do need in this campaign is more science. So Bartner's put all the necessary equipment into one of these storage containers. One of the things with the lab module that came up recently to the station that I made sure to include were more of these Kerbal Inventory System storage containers. They are so useful to have. So Bartner's just going to install this one down here at the aft docking port because that's where I plan on bringing in the Karayan so that all that equipment is ready for them to be installed. And speaking of which, I think it's time to get to the Karayan now. I also neglected to mention that I am now in version 1.1.3 uh, at this time, the most recent version of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, that seemed to be a bug squashing update, and I can say that uh, Kerbal Space Program is more stable for me now, which is great. It also seems to be a little bit of a performance increase as well. They, and all my mods transferred over except for one. You may have noticed that environmental visual enhancements or the EVE mod, I, I it has not gone to 1.1.3. I tried to install the 1.1.2 and didn't get anything happening, so I've uninstalled it. You might have noticed I don't have any clouds. I got sort of the stock atmosphere around Kerbin. That's okay. Obviously, the game's going to run just fine. As soon as Eve is ready for 1.1.3, I will be installing that, so it'll be back to its old look very, very soon. But in the meantime, uh, Glafia is going to need to install one of these docking ports that Bartner was so kind to uh, make available to us onto the Mark II cockpit, Gilly's cockpit, so that we can get ready to do the docking that we need to do. Okay, so we're going to put the Mark II up here at the forward docking port, and then we're going to move the Karayan II back down to the aft one. Oh, uh-oh. Looks like I got me some docking port issues. Yeah, the magnetic forces are definitely not taking hold here. No, no, they should be sticking together, and they are not. Now let's back away a little bit. I think all of these docking ports being moved around and reattached, let's turn the reaction wheels back on, uh, have confused it. Oh, there's an undock option. Okay, well, undock. Oh, that's weird. I got a life support warning. Don't know why. And it still says undock. But nothing's obviously undocked. Well, actually, that turned out to be an incorrect assumption. In fact, something was very undocked. Well, that explains the life support warnings because Stella and Bob and Shell Kyle have been set adrift. Oh, well, that is weird. Obviously, my docking ports are very confused. Well, this changed priorities, obviously, just a little bit. And because the Karine is rather still firmly attached to that Mark II cockpit, uh, I sent down one of my Kerr uses 
down there to recover this module and reattach it back to the station before the life support ran out on these guys. And then once the uh, once this was back in its proper place, we put the Curious back in its proper berth, and then it took some file editing. I had to get into the save file in order to fix this docking port and change its state around a little bit, but once that was accomplished, it was able to dock fine up here at the forward docking port, and then we moved the Curious back down to the aft docking port. So. Took a little bit of finagling, but I finally got this all configured the way I wanted. And this puts 12 Kerbals on this station, so it's time for me to start transferring Kerbals around and getting some of these Kerbals back down to the surface. And I was originally planning on taking the entire crew of the Karayan that have just come back from Mimis and bringing them down so they can all level up. But uh, I've decided to do all but one, and that has to do with my mistake of sending up the scientist Willman uh, last episode instead of an engineer because I am short an engineer for my next Karayan mission. I want to leave an engineer on the station and I want to bring an engineer uh, with the Karayan and I only have two engineers right now in space so rather than uh, juggle about some more Kerbals from the surface to here I decided I'm just going to go with what I have. So, Chrisnik, sorry, I know you just came back from Minmus, but you're going to stay as the engineer aboard the Karayan. All the rest of the Karayan crew, though, they're all being transferred over to the Dream Chaser and getting them back down to the surface. But before we're doing that, I do have to handle the science that came back from Minmus. And handling that is going to be Chrissy. So, she's going to remove the science from the Karayan. But rather than just taking that over to the Dream Chaser and bringing it all down to Kerbin's surface, I want to process some of this in the lab module that's now on the station. Now, I've been a little bit confused on how these lab modules have worked in the past, but I finally, with some help of actually reading the wiki, where there's a thought, read the instructions, I actually do have this now kind of figured out. So, um, I'm going to transfer all of this science into the lab module. Some of this science actually has a reasonable amount of science, especially the stuff that's been brought in from the surface of Minmus, but some of it is very trivial science or almost really actually zero science that I've collected but never transferred into scientific data. So here's how it works. Finally got this right. If you do the transferring it using the lab module into scientific data, it does use the science up. However, you can then go back and recollect the science. So if you had the lab module with you on site, that works great. Here, obviously, the lab module is not around Mimis, so it's not on site. So, for instance, here I have a mystery goo from Space Hyam of the Moon for only one science, because most of that has already been collected, but I can still process the scientific data, so we're going to process this one in the lab module. But then here we have a material study from the Highlands of Minmus. Uh, I want to keep that, because that's 112.5 science. Uh, we don't want to process that, because I would lose the science. So you see how this works, I'm processing everything that doesn't have a lot of science attached to it for the scientific data, everything else uh, is being kept and is going to be brought down to the surface because I want science now. Now ideally, I would have a lab module with me when I collect the science because then you can process it and then you can collect it again and get the best of both worlds, but uh, I have yet to accomplish that particular task. All my science laboratories are in orbit, so uh, that'll be something to shoot for in the future. And once this was all accomplished, Chrissy was of course transferred over to the Dream Chaser as well, and then it was time to get these five Kerbals back down to the surface for a much needed rest. We just had it oriented normally there just to catch some rays on the solar panel, charge up the batteries, but now it is time to move away from the station, get back here and activate the engines. Again, these are just two of those little puff puff monoprop engines. Just 40 kilonewtons of thrust all together provided with them, but uh, that is more than adequate for doing orbital maneuvering. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn in a retrograde direction, bring our periapsis down to 80 kilometers, and then we'll circularize at 80 kilometers, and then we'll do a final descent burn, descend into the atmosphere, trying to keep our 
descent as shallow as possible to minimize re-entry shock heating. I'll also add that now that Glyphia is coming back down to the surface that this marks the conclusion of her 152nd day in space, not consecutive, but still the new record just beating out Bill, who is on the surface at 148 days in space, so you got to know he's going to want to get back uh, back into space again and try to reclaim his record. Bill, though, still does have the consecutive days in space record. Nobody's quite close to him on that with uh, 120 consecutive days in space. Now, I am starting to get some heating concerns. The basic fins that are acting as canards are now well over 90% critical temperature. I'm trying to keep... Oh! Yeah, there they go. Everything else looks fine, but uh, having lost canards, I might have issues with pitch. Let's see, and okay, I got these control surface. Oh, wait, wait, I think I just turned off the pitch. Yeah, turn that back on. I definitely need that. I, this is my only pitch control now here at the back. I did test this thing on descent once and was able to land it on the runway without any issues, though you can probably see now that I am overshooting. But I didn't have anything burn off that time, though clearly basic fins might not have been the best choice to use as canards. They are a little bit fragile. We'll use, uh, see if we can pump some of this monoprop to the back because it is a little front heavy. One cool thing with 1.1.3 now is you can pin multiple menus to the side here, and if you pump any resource out of one of them, it will evenly distribute amongst the other ones. So I have two monoprop, cylindrical monoprop cans, and when I pump out the monoprop from the cockpit, it evenly distributes it amongst the other monoprop cans. So that's, that's a really cool and useful feature. I'm going to pump out actually more of this. It's still, of course it's front heavy now. It's lost its lifting surface at the front there. Thankfully nothing else is scarily heating. The issue is going to be, can I maintain pitch control as this thing goes down and part of the key of maintaining pitch control is going to be maintaining speed because I'm completely dependent upon those back control surfaces to keep pitch and this thing is front heavy so um, if I, uh, the control surfaces work best as you are going faster and as the air force is thicker too, but I need to keep my speed. So right here you can see I'm keeping my pitch at negative 30 degrees because I want to maintain my speed all the way down to the surface and hopefully when I get down here towards the end I'll still be able to pitch up without smashing into the water. Yeah, I think some tweaking of those forward canards are obviously in order. I think the basic fins was a bad idea. I'll have to put some other form of lifting surface up front there. Okay, okay, I gotta keep speed up. I think what I need to do is fire those engines. Use up that last bit of remaining fuel. Unfortunately, I already have another green chaser in the building queue that is identical to this one so it'll have the same problem well let's save a little bit of that fuel for right at the end 350 meters from the water and although perhaps I sound pretty calm about this right now I can assure you at the time I was uh, a little nervous <laughs> doing this okay 100 meters here we go last bit of fuel get that speed up keep up that lift pitch up okay I think I think I'm good Vertical speed is just, oh, and we are down. Thank you very much. And upon recovery, that was 472 science. Give me 531. I need 550 for that second tier eight node that I want. But uh, right now, I actually just want to celebrate everybody leveling up here, including my first two Kerbals, Chrissy and Glafia, going to level three. So that's fantastic. And I have some ideas to scrounge up a little bit more convenient science. But first, the last member of the mission out to the moon needs to get up there. Say hello to Merline. Hi, Merline. Merline is a tourist, and she wants to do an orbit around the moon and is willing to pay us to do it. 
So certainly we are not going to be saying no to her because we need money, don't we? And Jeb, Jeb has volunteered. He's kind enough to give her a ride up to Kerbin Station where she will be hitching along with the rest of the crew of the crying. We have the room, so this will be easy enough to just put her on board. But that's not the only thing that'll be happening with the Columbia here. Uh, the Columbia's docking bay have been, has been extended, so I'm calling this the Columbia 1A, and it's now long enough to fit a Mark II cockpit. So Jeb's second job is going to be to pick up that cockpit, get it into the, co into the cargo bay here, and bring it down to the surface to finish off that ghillie rescue mission. What I also have along here are these... Uh, these fun sort of cherry lights. I've changed the color so that they're orange. These came with the Mark I Laboratory Extensions mod, the Mole mod. They're kind of fun. You'll be seeing the Mole mod actually in its full glory next episode because the Karayan 3 is built. It is just in a launching queue to, to um, waiting for the launch pad to be redone. I got a few vessels now that are built and they're just gonna boom 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 one after another. That's why I was very uh, eager to get the Columbia off the pad and get this mission on the way. You can see I've stepped back the playback to two times speed. Speed this up a little bit because this was definitely one of the more finicky dockings I've had to perform. I do by the way do have the Mark III cargo bays and the Mark III cockpit unlocked um, and my original plan was actually to build a bigger space shuttle to bring this thing down but once I got into building that bigger space shuttle I soon realized that although I had the cockpit and the docking bay what I lacked were Mark III space ready fuel cans fuel cans that could hold monoprop and oxidizer and that kind of thing uh, that is a separate node so I could build myself for instance a jumbo jet I don't quite know why I'd want a jumbo jet but I couldn't build myself a space shuttle. So I tried to make do with this. But it certainly would be nicer to have a bigger docking bay. It is just longer than the Mark II cockpit. I did check that out in the vehicle assembly building and I seem to have things lined up pretty good right now. Just keep lowering this down. A little bit forward. Oh, Jeb, you are doing your a uh, fine job. Look at that. Okay, just about. Come on, just a little bit down, a little bit further. Um, I I think I have a problem. Yeah, I am. I am thrusting downwards. It is not going downwards any further. And I think it's because although I have the length right, it's too wide. It won't fit in. Shoot, let's take a look at this more closely. Yeah, that's not going to fit in there. Nope. And the docking ports just won't get close enough together to hook together. Shoot. Okay. Then, uh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, my gosh. Definitely too big. Oh, what was I even thinking about? Let's back out of here. Okay, so we're not going to be able to take this cockpit down just yet. We'll have to come up with some other plan. But in the meantime, I still need to get my tourist aboard. And the tourist can't do an EVA. <laughs> so this is going to necessitate a little bit of modification. Thankfully, Bartner is the expert of modification, and uh, I have all kinds of docking ports kicking about, so Bartner's just going to add an extra docking port temporarily to the Columbia. And that allowed Jeb to dock. Well, a slightly different orientation, but docking nonetheless. And then we'll get uh, Merlin. Merline? Merline, that's what her name is. We'll get Merline aboard the Karayan get her ready to go to the moon. We'll also need to get the Karayan still ready to go to the moon. It still is empty of fuel, so we need to bring up a resupply barge. That will be the beginning of next episode. We'll get that barge up here. It also has a lot of other goodies to be outfitted to the crime, but again, that will have to be next episode. And then Jeb will just disconnect. Mission partially successful. Couldn't bring down the cockpit, but did bring up our tourists. And we'll say goodbye to Kerbin Station. And we'll also say goodbye to this episode. 
I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.